Welcome everybody to our business math presentation. In this video, we are discussing the derivative as a limit. This is Magda Talib al from Sultan Qaboos University, and I welcome you all to our presentation. We think the main problem in differential calculus is to find the slope of the line tangent to a given curve at a certain point. Now, let's draw the x and y axes and discuss this on a curve as we see in front of us. Here is the curve. We take any point, we fix it, let's say point P, and we take another point Q, and Q is getting closer and closer to P from the right side. Let's see the second joining P and Q in the first situation is as we see in front of us. As Q gets closer to uh, P, let's see what happens to the second line. There we go. Again, we get closer and closer to P. Here is the secant line. Until Q coincides with the point P, the secant line will be the red tangent line in front of us. Now, let's do the same thing from the left side. Q is getting closer and closer to P from the, right si from the left side. Here is the secant line, and then we get closer. Here is the secant line again, and then we get closer and closer. Here is the secant line again, and then Q coincides from the left side on P. So there we go. We have the secant line will be the blue tangent line. In other words, we can say that as Q moves from the right side and gets closer to P, the secant line approaches the red tangent line. And the same happens as Q gets closer to P from the left side, the secant line joining Q and P will coincide with the blue tangent line. In fact, we see that the blue and the red tangent line are the same limit to the secant, whether from the left or from the right. We move on. On the slide, you will see how can we find the slope of the line tangent to a curve at a given point P. Here is P and here is Q. We draw the secant line joining PQ, and now we want to find the slope of this PQ because we will take a limit later as Q gets closer to P. We know that the secant becomes a tangent at P, so in this way we can find the slope of the tangent line. Now let's see, here is X1, this distance, and this is X2. This height will be F of X1, and this will be F of X2. So now we see in front of us, this distance is equal to the difference of x2 minus x1. And this height of the right angle triangle in front of us, we see this right angle triangle. This height in it is f of x2 minus f of x1. Now, the slope of pq from the right angle triangle is the rise over the run. So we have f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1 will give us the slope of pq. Now, we call this distance x and we call the distance between x1 and x2 h. So the whole thing is here for x2 is x plus h. So we remove every x2 and we put x plus h. We remove every x1 and we put x. So here we have f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x. We see that the x and the minus x, they add up to zero. So the slope of pq will be equal to f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. As q gets closer and closer to the point p, we see that x2 is closer and closer to x1. So h is getting closer and closer to zero. So as P get, Q gets closer to P until we take the limit of H is zero, we find that the secant is now tangent at P. And in such case, we see that the slope of the tangent line at P is equal to the limit of the slope of PQ as H goes to zero. We move on. In view of our discussion in the previous slides, we come to the formula for the derivative as a limit, it is equal to f prime of x 
is equal to limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, provided that the limit exists. Now, let's take an example. Find the derivative of x squared, but we have to use the de definition of the derivative as a limit. So, we start our solution expressing y prime in the form of uh, the given formula here. This is equal to limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h, in our case it will be x plus h all squared, minus f of x minus x squared all over h. Now we open this uh, square bracket. So here we have the first squared, x squared. The first time is the second times 2, 2 x h. The second squared, here we have the h squared. And we all see that the x squared and the x squared and the minus x squared add up to 0. So we get limit as h goes to 0, 2 x h plus h squared all over h. Now, if we substitute for h equals 0, we get 0 plus 0, which is 0 over 0. So we need to cancel the 0 factor. This is undefined. So we need to cancel the zero factor. We all see that there is a common factor h in the numerator, which we can take outside. So here we have limit as h goes to zero. We take h as a common factor, and then we are left with 2x plus h inside the bracket. All this over h. So now, can we cancel the h in the numerator with the h in the denominator? Yes. Now we have limit as h goes to zero, 2x plus h. Now, if we substitute for h equal to 0, we arrive at 2x. So, the derivative of x squared is 2x. You, we, we arrived at this 2x using the definition of the derivative as a limit. We move to another example. Okay, let's see this example uh, where we are asked to use the definition of the derivative as a limit. To find the derivative of y equals to 1 over x. We start our solution writing y prime is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Next, we make common denominator as we see x cross multiplication x plus h all over x times x plus h. Then we take this denominator down here to, next to the h. So we have limit x minus x plus h all over hx into x plus h. We can see if we open the bracket with this minus sign, we'll have a minus x, and then we will have a minus h. So we have x minus x, which add up to 0, minus h all over hx into x plus h. Now we cancel these. We are left in the numerator with a minus h, and the denominator, we have, the, uh, we have it as it is, hx into x plus h. H. Now, if we substitute for h equal to 0, we get 0 over 0, which is undefined. But we can cancel the 0 factor we see in front, uh, in front of us. The h can be canceled in the numerator and the denominator. So we arrive at limit as h goes to 0 of minus 1 all over x into x plus h. Now, if we substitute for h equals to 0, we arrive at the solution, which is minus 1 over x squared. Minus 1 over x squared is the derivative of the given function 1 over x. We move on to another example. Together we see this example. Use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of y equals square root of x. We start writing y prime is equal to limit f of x plus h, which is square root of x plus h, minus f of x which is root x, all over h. Now, if we substitute for h equals 0, we get 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator, which is undefined. For us, we need to do something to get rid of the 0 factor in the numerator and the denominator. What shall we do? Yes, we multiply by the conjugate of the amount here, which is square root of x plus h minus square root of x. What's the conjugate for this? As we see in front of us, it's square root of x plus h plus square root of x. We multiply and divide by the same quantity. We rewrite this in the form in front of us here, and we see that the denominator, we're going to keep it as it is. We're not going to 
multiply by each term by term. But in the numerator, we look, we find two identical brackets, one with a minus, the other with a sign. So we should think of the difference between two squares. And in such case, we will get the first term squared minus the square of the second term. What's the square of the first term? It is x plus h. What's the square of the second term? It is x. So we arrive at x plus h minus x all over h into the bracket square root of x plus h plus square root of x. Now, we see that the x and the minus x will add up to 0. So we arrive at limit as h goes to 0, h over h square root, open bracket square root of x plus h plus square root of x. We cancel the h with the h, so we arrive at limit 1 over square root of x plus h plus square root of x. Now, if we substitute for h equals 0, we're fine. We arrive at 1 over 2 root x, which is the derivative of square root of x, which is here for y. 